Okay. And how long are we going, Dana? Um, one hour. Got it. That's what I thought. Make sure. Yes. Till one year time. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Oh, wait, I hear myself talking. Hold on one second. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. Okay, I think that will be better. Sorry, I've got it going in the training room here too also. Um, okay, guys, thanks for being on. Sorry, we're just a second late getting started, but I have some amazing guest for you today. Um, actually, you get a bonus bonus guest <laughs> uh, that we didn't know that we were going to have today, which I'm really excited about. So Linda and I had planned to talk about shift and um, a shifting market and going through a recession. And Linda, will you share with them who your friend is and how we have an extra guest? I will. My friend Terry Muller and we met at a Monica Reynolds uh, women's conference. Yeah. Gosh, in the early 90s yeah early 90s and i of course was a baby agent not doing all the wonderful things everybody else was doing and sat at a table with terry and just with my mouth hung open at what great business she did and then we start we went to conferences together and we were in a mastermind group together and we just became uh really best friends through real estate and have stayed best friends and uh you and i had terry as a great episode on our podcast one of our most listened to episodes ever actually and we refer back to it all the time because there's no person better at keeping her clients uh than terry is and so we were here for a conference this weekend and there they hung over at the house with us so we you guys get a bonus today you get a lot of knowledge today love it Love it. Love it. Awesome. Terry, we're so excited to have you. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. I'm sure Linda roped you into this at the last minute. She was probably like, hey, throw on your lipstick and get on the Zoom with me. <laughs> That's, right, Linda. That's right. That's right. Um, okay, guys. So before we get started, um, if you have any questions throughout this, if you can just please put them in the chat, that would be great. And we'll fill through those. So we recently heard a crazy statistic, um, crazy to me, that over 70%, look, we'll find the episode. Um, I knew somebody was going to ask for that. Actually, Abby, I don't know if you might be able to look back through the episodes. It would say special guest, um, and I'll try to look through it too. Um, so we'll, we'll post that in here, Sharon. Um, recently, uh, NAR came out with, a with the statistic that over 70% of the agents that are currently licensed with National Association of Realtors have entered the business after 07, 08. So they have actually never been through a shift or a recession, which is wild. Um, if you have been through a shift or recession, we type yes or no in the chat just so we can have a gauge. Of well, and, and even Dana, if they've lived through a sh sh shift, I remember in the 08 shift, um, well, first of all, Brad, who was running my team, had not lived through a shift, but your team members may have never lived through a shift. So you may have, and it may be time that you got to start educating them because your team members have never gone through a shift. Yep, totally, totally. Oh, we've got lots of lots of no's and some yeses too. Okay, perfect. Um, so when that statistic came out, you know, I started thinking, gosh, I think it's easy for us to say, hey, pick up this book and go read it. Mm -hmm. um, but we know y'all and a lot of y'all <laughs> won't do that. <laughs> Um, but you but you will get on a Zoom and listen uh, to us talk about it. So, um, and the other thing that we found out too, and this is why, oh my gosh, I'm so pumped that Terry's here because a lot of times I think what people love the most are getting the ideas that will help them uh, grow their business through the shift and really, really thrive through a shift. And yeah. the one quote that keeps sticking to me and Linda and I've heard it over and over and over is the market share that you get in a shift, uh, you'll never lose, but the market share that you lose, you'll never get back. Yeah. And Linda, was it Gary that said, or I don't even know where that originated from. I feel like maybe Gary. Yeah. It's probably from one of the masterminds, you know, and as you say that Dana, one of the things that we we've always done when the market starts to shift is, you know, offer your clients a shift book. A lot of them own businesses and maybe they've never been through a shift or they have, and they're panicked because they have been through one. But uh, a shift book is a great opportunity to touch base with your people and ask them who do they know that might kind of be talking about. They're a little bit worried about the economy and what's going to happen in the shift. So that's a great tool to use 
uh, to use the shift book with your clients or do a shift book uh, mastermind with your clients. Yeah, love that idea. Um, okay, Linda, will you quickly talk to us and Terry jump into, um, I've only been through one shift. How many, Linda, have you gone through and Terry? Uh, I got in the real estate business in a terrible shift. I mean, matter of fact, we had 18% interest, interest rates that could actually adjust up to 21%. Wow. Uh, and that was the first one. Uh, and then it lasted through the early 90s. Mm -hmm. And then the 08 one was my second. So this is this will be my third. How about mm -hmm. you? Oh, I've had five shifts. Wow. OK. Wow. Starting my started my career in 1979. And so as a new agent, very much like Linda, the interest rates were 18 mm percent. -hmm. But I didn't know any better. Yeah. Terry, I feel like someone in the chat is getting ready to ask for you to post your face cream, like whatever you use on your <laughs> like, How did you for five shifts. What? <laughs> What's that? Like, it's not wrinkles. It's, it's that Southern California living. Yeah. Yeah. The sunshine. It's sunshine and uh, ocean or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what are your guys's take right now on on this next one? Because I know everybody says it won't be as bad as what it was in 07, 08. Any thoughts just to kick us off that you guys have? Well, I think, um, you know, what I was talking to Linda about earlier is that this is the first time mm. that I have seen where the shift is everywhere, everywhere. at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So going to the conference that we just went to, um, there were agents from all around the country. And oh, everyone okay. was talking about the same thing. And so whereas in the past, California was one way and maybe Florida or yeah. Texas or the Midwest, it's yeah. all been the same. It's like five or six week, weeks ago, all of a sudden, everything stopped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, and so the, the challenge that I think that we, that we have, or at least I have right now, are the clients that I have that got caught in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that got caught in it. And like many of, of the... Of people out there. And again, um, going back to the conference that we went to and talking to so many different agents is that we were all telling people that, you know, we'll put your house on the market on Thursday and hear all the offers on Tuesday. Yeah. And that's how it's been for yeah. a long time. And um, so yeah. now it's really managing the client's expectations. Yeah. And um, again, what you talked about at the beginning, Dana, uh, most agents have not had the experience um, of, you know, any of this stuff. I mean, I know in the last two years, we were selling houses that people didn't care if they had an inspection. Yep. And now we've got inspection issues and we've got people asking for money back and, you know, things that we haven't done for a long time. Yeah. And Dana and, and Terry's right. We, and we know we may not have the foreclosures we had before, yes. yeah. but what we will have is expectations yes. that we have to learn how to have great scripts and dialogues around yes. to manage. Uh, because at the conference this past weekend, one agent, a really good agent said, I had a seller want to fire me after 10 days because the house hadn't sold. Yes. So there must be something wrong with me. And so learning what are your, what's wow. your listing presentation? I just so that read that you, down. Yep. So when you go in, you've got to have a listing presentation that's real clear that you get from them, you know, kind of what they're expecting. You know, did they hear from a person at a party last week that they made, they got 50 offers? Because, you know, that's old news, but to them, that's fresh news. So that's the main thing is, is no, you may not have all the foreclosures, but you're going to have prices not going up, up, up. So you're going to have to know how to price better. I mean, there's just so many skills that are going to come into play that mm. uh, no matter how much it's shifting, if it's shifting at all, you'll have to learn how to have those skills and scripts and dialogues and presentations. Yeah, I just wrote down one thing, too, that I wanted to make sure that everybody knows. And we've said this many times, but we've moved from a speed based market to a skill back to a skill based market. Yeah. And I think that's really important for everybody to note. Um, it's not necessarily that the market that we've been in has been easy. I mean, some people would say it's been easy, but some people would say it's been terrible because they wrote 54 offers to get two accepted. Yeah. So I think it's been more of a speed based and we're moving back to a skill based market. And just like you said, Linda, and one of the things I wanted us to touch on is some of the agents and a lot of them maybe even on today uh, have never actually had a listing presentation because they've never had to <laughs> yeah they yeah, just right. or and they they've never had conversations around how to have price reductions because they've never had to right yeah. um right. and so i think when i think of moving back to a skill-based market and sharpening your skills those are some of the things you may have never had to learn scripts 
because you haven't had to have scripts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but as we move back into that, we will. So what, what are some things that you guys can think of other than those uh, or even expanding on those, but being having a strong listing presentation, um, really knowing the expectations around sellers, what advice or, or, or around pricing? I mean, what advice would you give some of the people listening who've never done that before? Well, one of the things that I want to um, talk about is being an expert in the market. Mm -hmm. oh, I, just, yeah, love it. I just wrote my um, letter to the letter from the heart, which I write every month to my clients. And, and um, in my letter from the heart, I wrote about experts. And mm -hmm. I said, whether you are looking for a realtor or whether you're looking for a financial planner or um, anybody to do with your um, you know, the big things in your life, you really need an expert mm -hmm. now. So there's lots of people doing lots of things, but you need that expert. Mm -hmm. So yep, I, was, I love that. You know, talking to you about yeah. your, your, your uh, damage here with the insurance, yeah. you have a really good insurance person. You have an expert at insurance yeah. Yeah. because otherwise you wouldn't have been able to benefit from that. Yeah. So, so, so being an expert in the marketplace and really knowing your numbers yeah. And, and knowing the pricing, you know, we're talking about pricing, but, you know, I mean, in the past, we always went out and looked at homes, but mm -hmm. now, you know, sometimes we get away from looking at homes because yeah. we're just going to look at them on online, yeah. but you really need to be that expert in the market. Yeah, I, I, need, I agree with everything she said you need because sometimes what has happened in the past is you could have one market that's moving faster always first time home buyers moves a lot faster and then your upper end just comes to a complete stall stall yeah. and you can't get them to sell so you've got to learn how to have conversations with both of those mm -hmm. kind of people and i think your communication is going to have to change um, you know, I remember I used to tell people, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll be giving you a call every, uh, I would tell them yeah. 10 days and I would communicate in seven, because if you wait till that 10, somewhere about day nine or 10, they're calling you and there's nothing worse than yeah. you pick up the phone and they're on the other line wanting to know why they're not <laughs> So you start sure. tap dancing real quick. So you got to be ahead of everything, like yes. your communication, what, you know, how, how much will you communicate with them? Because in absence of communication, they make up stories yep. and it's never the true story. So yeah. you don't want them out there making up stories. So texts probably aren't going to be as effective um, as picking up the phone. And that's going to be hard for a lot of people. Yeah. But when things are rough, um, they don't want to, you things can get messed up through a text. So being brave enough to pick up the phone and, and explain to them why, you know, the market is just, you know, it's slowing and, you know, that's, that's telling us something, right. And we got a yeah. couple options here. So just uh, uh, keeping that communication, uh, maybe in a different style than you've been used to also. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> really fast, but I don't want to forget it. Uh, Terry, someone asked, are you mailing snail mailing your letters from the heart or emailing them? Mm. Oh, I, um, do both. Okay. So I have a newsletter that I send out every month. Is it the same one that goes out both ways? Yeah. Same it's one. It's the okay. same one. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. And I love that. I love the being just the expert and the local economist. I think now, and actually Linda, I got sucked into watching that unwell on, uh, <laughs> <laughs> And now I'm like, want to get stung by bees and crap, but um, <laughs> everything, everything Linda gets me into, Adam is like, oh Lord, what are we doing now? <laughs> so oh, he we cannot watched, take me off the wedding list though. <laughs> no, no, it's not happening. Um, but it was funny because, you know, they said something on there and I thought, man, gosh, that's just like us. They said now people seek out their own information. Like yes, we, when, yes. when something's so, wrong with us, yeah. Remember when they said that when something's wrong with us now, we don't just go to the walk-in clinic or call our doctor. We seek out our own information. We're like looking at influencers or bloggers or reading this on this website or podcast. Or this, their podcast. Yeah. To try to figure out what it is. And as soon as he said that, I thought, oh my gosh, our clients do the same thing. <laughs> so if they're not, they better not know more than, and they better not know more than you. You That's bet. Right. I can tell real quick whether a doctor knows as much as I do, because I spend a lot of time and energy around yep. it. And yep. my biggest turnoff is they're stupid and they act like it's still the way it was forever yes. ago. Yep. And I just, yep. I won't go back to them. Yep. 
But how great of a point is that for us as r- real estate agents and the 80 something plus on here and the hundreds that are going to watch the recording, if you think that what yeah. you've always known is still the way to think and you're not willing to get on a plane like these ladies still do, and I know some of you do too, but go be involved in masterminds and groups and you're figuring out what's happening and what's because it, it does change and our clients they're just like us. If they can't get the answer, they're getting on and they're going to find it from somebody if they're not getting it from you. And they're going to go with the person that they feel like is most knowledgeable and is the expert. Because when things go bad, you do want an expert. You're thinking, I don't see when things are going good, you're thinking, oh, anybody can sell my house. And they don't think our value is there. But when things are harder, they really do appreciate us more. So Terry and I both were talking about how we're kind of looking forward to it a little bit because there is a whole better appreciation, well, right? They need us now. Yeah, they need us. Yeah. But you know, exactly. one of the questions I always ask uh, my client is where do you get your information from? Love that. Yep. You know, and um, so I want to know if they Google everything, yeah. you know, or are they, you know, belong to something or they get it on Fox news or, you know, yep. or, 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 or Zillow or, yeah, yeah. you know, so where <laughs> do you get your information? Because you're, you're right. When you go into a listing appointment now, I mean, they think they already know, Mm -hmm. you know? And so um, I always say, gee, where do you get your information from? Yep. Yeah. Great one. Yep. Yep. I love that. Um, Okay. So really quickly, let's talk about some of the tactics. I think we've touched a little bit. The first one is get real, get right. It's always starts with your mind. Anything else that you guys would add on that? Because one of the things I think of is I, I hear that will have like the turnover of agents. There'll be some that are going to get out of the business because Uh they don't want to adopt. They don't want to learn technology. They don't want to go through another recession. They're burnout. You know, they just, they're going to fluctuate out. And then there's going to be some that fluctuate in. I think sometimes when people hear a recession, they, or a shift, they automatically go such to the negative. Um, What would you say about mindset? Because I think there's a lot of opportunity that can be gained too. Yeah. You want to go first? Yeah. Um, mindset is everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I think of some of the shifts that I've gone through, it's always, always I've done well coming, coming into a shift because I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm learning based. So I'll go out there and learn whatever else, whatever I need to learn. And I've always wanted to be the expert on everything. So I'm, I'm probably overqualified on just about everything like Linda, Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're just always learning something new, but when it really comes down to it, it's really the way you think about things. And I always yeah. say, in fact, on my telephone calls, it's um, my, it says what you think about, you bring about. Mm. And, mm. I, and I, I believe that if I want to, and I tell my clients that, you know, because they all know I'm like that. Mm-hmm. And I say, you know, if we really want to find a buyer, then we have to all think together that we're yeah. going to have that buyer for your nice home. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say, you know, for me, I used to have a ritual because what will start to happen is you'll feel like there's more realtors than there is business. And so what, what do you do uh, when that happens? And a couple of things, one that helped used to help me was I'd go get in my car just to maybe even go to the Sonic and get a soda or something, but I would make sure I would drive through neighborhoods and see how many rooftops there really were Yeah, because, or get on the MLS and see how many homes sold last month, because when you do that, you realize that there's enough homes out there. I'm just not getting my share. So then my, my issue begins to be, how do I get my share? And so I get real about the fact that it's not that there's not enough sales going on. It's the fact that I'm not getting enough of that. I need to hit my goals. So that's one thing. And then the other is have a peer partner uh, that can kind of spot when you, what I call go in the gap or, or go in the, you know, the gray space, and kind of just get them, maybe give them the mineral rights questions from fierce conversations, you know, and have them just start asking you questions because when someone starts asking you questions, it activates your brain to get out of the place where you are. And you'll very quick, it's kind of like when the doctor starts asking you questions, you start feeling better and solving your problem yourself. Yeah. You'll do the same thing here. Uh, but the problem is you're keeping it all inside and it's getting pushed down. You're not talking it out with somebody. So find a peer or somebody that you can say, Hey, I just, you know, I just need to talk to somebody. Dana and I just call and say, Hey, I just need an adult or adult. I did that to Nikki this morning, this morning. And we realized we all need an adult or adult, but, um, so find out what, you know, figure out where do you get in that low space? What is it causes that? 
Uh, and then if you don't have any idea what to get out, find somebody and say, hey, if you were me, what would you do in this situation? Yeah. Here's where I tend to start feeling down and like, I don't really know if I want to go through this shift or do whatever, but everybody does it. So don't think you're the only one. I mean, everybody does it. Uh, and you just want to, you know, figure out who can you talk to that's going to maybe help you see things differently. You know, one of the things that helped us, like even this weekend was just uh, getting ideas from other people about how yeah. they're overcoming some of the buyer's objections of, you know, of uh, different things. So okay. get around other people because they'll give you ideas that you can then go back and use on your appointments. Yeah. Um, somebody asked, this is a great question. Where do you go to to actually get your information from? I mean, I think some one of you two just now said it a second ago too, but it, like you should be the master of your MLS and your local yes. stats. Yeah. And I, I see that she's on, but I mean, I don't know anybody in our area better than Jenny Matioka at that. Like she, they look every morning and every day and she knows exactly how many homes came on and how many price reductions and all of those things. If you don't know how to do that stuff, you need to find, yeah, every day there she is. You need to find somebody to teach you how to do that. Um, and then I think there's several others. I mean, we never miss a chance to go to mega camp or family reunion and hear the, and the kind of thing right here. Huh? Yeah, yeah. What we're doing today. Yeah, constant, just any anything podcast. I mean, there are so many great ones. <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. 74 price changes in the past 24 hours on our oh, MLS. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know about your MLS, but our MLS, um, I can put a, um, I, I call it like I'm a stockbroker and it says yeah. how many new listings, how many price reductions. Yeah. And, and so, and I show that to, to the client when I'm sitting there working with them. And I tell them that I watch this every single day. And I also, uh, years ago, put a spreadsheet together and so that I can keep track of, you know, how many new listings and, you know, and understanding absorption rate because, you know, we, you know, like we've had no absorption yeah. rate because yeah. it's been a negative number. Yeah. But when you can uh, sit, that, sit down with a client and explain those things. Now, I've been blessed, I think, um, over my career, 75% of my clients are, are engineers. So oh. I'm used to being data driven. Bless so, you. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, uh, in my in my early part of my career, I had uh, agents who used to refer or agents in my own uh, office refer people to because they didn't want to work with the engineers. Because they didn't want to work with the engineers. Yeah, that can be you know? tough. And uh, but you know, uh, and I prepare every listing appointment. Every time I go out with someone, I prepare for the engineer. Now I don't use all of that because you know we all understand the disc profile, so I don't want to overwhelm somebody. But you're prepared. Uh, but I'm prepared, and so okay. I always yeah. look like the expert because I'm overly prepared. Yeah. 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 But, I love that. Data and, data and information is, you know, if you walk in and you've got all the information, you're going to shine more than anyone else. Yeah. And using examples of like, you know, right now, if gasoline was, you know, $10 a gallon over here and it's five, where are you going to go get your gasoline? Yeah. You yeah. know, because in a shifting market, uh, houses become commodities. Yeah. And so they're very price sensitive. And so you could, you know, and, and like you looked in that documentary and you found something that related, look for other outside places that you see people, you know, probably uh, do it themselves. They compare prices and they go with the one that's, that's priced the best and stuff. So look for outside examples to use or ask great questions, you know, get them because our, our dilemma is we get, they're emotional because they think all this stuff. So we got to move them to logic and great questions move people to logic. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I think too, um, Terry, you said something earlier, you're just, you're always learning based and obviously Linda and I are the same way. And when you said that, Linda, it just made me think I'm the person, I think I took 17 pages of notes from the Garth Brooks documentary <laughs> on, 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 on leadership and just success. I mean, I think when you, when you start to get your brain like that, I mean, you can, yeah. Adam gets so frustrated because I mean, we, I can't watch the show without, I'm like, oh, give me my notebook really fast because I got to write that down or put it in my phone. But yeah. you just constantly start to see other things and you'll relate them to what you do. Um, yeah. I mean, I like, 
and I pay attention to things. I know you, you ladies do too, but like Gary gave this or it was in mega camp or something. I mean, I immediately within a day, Heather had this printed and laminated for me because I wanted to be able to use this. They're reli reliably forecasting recessions. How long did they last? When were the last ones we had? When did they start? When did they end? Yes. I mean, it, it show up with something laminated and you're an expert just because it's like, just because it's yeah. laminated. Yeah. Not really, but you have to know those things. And if you're not quick at knowing those numbers or learning them, like it needs to be in front of you all the time so that you get it. Um, you, you know, and it's okay. I mean, you don't need to have everything in your head. In fact, showing right. things, yeah. you know, show and tell is yeah. such a, such a big thing. Yeah. And so I love showing statistics and, yeah. and, and showing things to people. But one of the things that we um, talked about this weekend with some of the, um, the, the um, people that we met is that it's a price war in a beauty contest. Yeah. Now that was, we used to use that. We used to ago. use that years ago. Hey, okay. What does that mean? A price war means that you're going to have a price right and it's got to look right. Yeah. Well, in the last two years, at least in California, you, you can stick anything on the market. Right. What it look like. Now it's got to be priced right and it's got to look good. And so, you know, we need to get back to staging and making yep. our houses look good and, yeah. and all that. And, um, you know, and so you can't just, you know, take your iPhone and go take pictures. You need a professional, you know, yep. and, I, and I always tell everyone that, at least in our area, um, that the, when you get a showing on your house, it's the second showing. The first showing happens online. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important, especially on the listing side, is that we use professional pictures, um, video, or, you know, in, in Southern California, I mean, I don't know how, how it is here, but in Southern California, I mean, there's a lot of competition. And so you've got to do things, you know, at, at mm -hmm. a very high level. High quality. And, yeah. um, but in the last two years, I saw many listings that it was an iPhone yeah. pictures and you know they oh, yeah. with that stuff but i still did everything that i always have done yeah that's but a great now, point but now we need it yeah now yeah, you have absolutely. To it. yeah well actually that walks right into the next thing i was going to ask which is about remargining your business and expense management sometimes i think we can be guilty of like oh my gosh we just gotta stop everything you know what, like, what would you say is cutting? Like, I see people cut their coaches, move out of their offices. They stop all their direct mail. And I'm like, wait a minute. If it's, per, there's a difference between an expense and an investment. Yeah. Um, what would you guys say on that? Well, you, first of all, you never cut anything that's working and you should have been measuring everything all along. Yeah. So you, you measure it for some kind of return. And here's the thing. If I've got a coach and I'm not seeing value in the fact that I've got a coach, I should have got rid of that coach already a long time ago. Right. But I don't go get rid of a coach who's helping me be more productive. I don't care what's happening in the marketplace. So we should have, number one, always hold your money accountable to give a return. So yeah. should have been doing that already. Right. But now it's imperative that you do it because you don't have you're not going to have extra money necessarily to to just throw things at the wall and see if it sticks. But uh, yeah, I would never get rid of anything that is a lead generation that actually works yeah. or investing in myself because I am the asset. Yeah. I'm either, yes. you know, I'm either going to be a pro athlete at this or I'm not. Oh, I love that. That's so good. Yeah. Terry. Yeah. No, I totally agree with yeah. everything that Linda yeah. says. And I, and I think about, you know, maybe because I've been in so many shifts um, <laughs> that, you know, I think I was just thinking about what you are, the question is that every quarter, even in the last two years, I met with my team and we looked at everything that we've been doing and should we do something different? Mm -hmm. You know, should we go ahead and do the, um, um, you know, the three D's, the three mm -hmm. D stuff. I mean, you know, so we looked at all those things quarterly mm -hmm. and, and we started implementing things as we went along, just based on, I had the feeling that this was coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's great because that reminds me of the um, Wayne Gretzky, like you skate to where the puck is going, you know, not where it is. And Gary always says you should act like the market that is coming, not the one that you're in. Yeah. yeah and I would probably, if I was going to cut anywhere too, I'd cut as much personally as I would anywhere else because yeah. 
if you do gain market share here, you do not, you never lose. I've never lost market share that I gained and I've always gained market share in a shift. Yeah. So yep. you kind of should be prepping to be ready for it yep. and cut personally before I would cut anything in business that's working because uh, now's the time to go big because you can gain market share and gain business that you could keep for the rest, yep. you know, the next 20 years. Yeah, uh, that's a great point. I feel like Gary mentioned that on our mastermind too, that a lot of people say they have to go to their business, but they won't cut out their Starbucks every day, you know, or their lavish, all their stuff that they do. Um, Cause we don't think about that. And usually that, that can be a big deal. Um, what about, uh, let's talk really fast about expectations with the sellers, like actually setting, because I'm hearing from a lot of our agents too, that they're going in and people are still thinking that they can have the prices that they had a month ago or two months ago. Um, yeah. What would you guys say on just being able to manage their expectations? Right, way? Linda, you kind of touched on that in the beginning, yeah. but maybe go a little bit deeper on that. Yeah. Yeah. Go first. yeah. yeah. I think that is the number one thing right now that we have to do. Yeah. And again, going back to what I said, I always say, where do you get your information from? Yeah. You know? And so um, I ask a lot of questions up front mm -hmm. because I need to know where they're coming from so that I can deliver my presentation based on that. Yeah. Yep. You know, and so, and I always ask, I mean, 90% of my business comes from my database, but I have a lot of referrals from people too. You know, I always ask, you know, when was the last time you used a real estate agent? You know, um, how did you like that agent? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it, almost hurts me when I hear somebody who bought a house five or six years ago and they don't even remember their agent. Yeah. You know, because I, I work very hard to keep my, my nice. clients mm -hmm. and, and keep myself in front of them all the time. But, um, you know, really sitting there and saying, again, you have to be able to have your, your data or your information so you can show them that you're the expert and then, you know, telling them exactly how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And, yep. um, you know, and telling stories. I'm a, I'm a big storyteller, yep. you yep. know, and I like to be able to, you know, say that, you know, last week this happened and this is what it was. And, you know, um, uh, you know, and because I've been in the business for so long, I don't even have to make them up. They're all true. You know? <laughs> but people relate to stories and other yeah. people, they want to feel like somebody else. Yeah. yeah so, totally agree with and, that. You know, I, and I was like last week um, before we came here for the conference, you know, my clients are sitting there saying, oh, I feel like I waited too long and they were all like negative. And, you know, so at first I had to get them that, no, listen, you know, I'm the expert. I'm going to be able to get you through this, you know, and so uh, we can do it. And, you know, so it's really like sitting there asking the right questions and delivering the information according to what you hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and I always say this in everything that I teach, no one does what you tell them buyers don't, sellers don't, and we can't make buyers buy or sellers sell. What we have to do is get people to act, to really self-discover yes. that either you're the person, this is the time, this is the price, this is what we should do, whatever. And the greatest way to do that is great logical questions that make them yeah. think, yep. great stories that they can see them their own selves in and experientially which yes. means sometimes we've had to get them in the car and take them to see yes. some of the competition. But back to the presentation, I think it's set in the present, in your listing presentation. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I just redid all my listing uh, uh, course and everything else is because most people don't think to go in and ask questions. And one of the first questions I think that's most valuable you can ask is, you know, I know time is, thank you for having me out tonight. I know time is your most valuable asset and so that I don't waste it. On a scale of one to 10, 10, we totally meet your expectations or one, I totally waste your time tonight. What are your expectations for our meeting tonight? Because what I want to know is, are they already planning on listing with me? Uh, do they need me to prove to them why they yeah. should list? And you yeah. got to get clear about that first and you got to be okay to ask great questions and then let silence do the heavy lifting yeah. and not, you know, let, let it go until it's completely awkward and then go a little bit longer. And that's going to be real hard for a lot of people to do, but you want them to tell you as much as you possibly can <clears throat> before you stump, jump in and start telling them, you know, what you think. And so mo majority of your questions should be more consultative yeah. and more great questions and figuring out if we can't get the price you want, but we get you there on time. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, or if I get you there with, with hardly any hassles and uh, is that okay? I mean, you've got to figure out 
where are they willing to give a little uh, or where are they just align in the sand and they're not going to budge, right? And then you also have to be willing to ask people how motivated they are yeah. because this is not a time that you can work with the unmotivated, right? Yep. You want to, unless you just want to be kind of drug all over the the, the schoolyard like yeah. a puppy or something, because that's what will happen. They'll just drag you everywhere. <laughs> But you gotta you gotta try to figure out their motivation, and that's how you choose who you who you work with is their motivation. Yeah. Yeah, one of the questions that I ask up front is, um, what's important about selling your house now? Yeah. Oh, yep, love it. Yeah. 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 And then going deeper on that, and 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 writing down all of this so that later, when you're in the middle of negotiating repairs, yeah, that you can say, you know, I wrote down here, Mister Seller. In, in my notes that you told me that it was really important for you to get to, you know, Denton, Texas to be with your family. And so is it, you know, is that still a priority? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so, and, you know, I write, I write down everything. And like Linda had mentioned about how people forget things. Yeah. And one of the things that we started probably a few years back now is that we, um, do uh, the ultimate, it's called the ultimate scenario. So we take what people say to us. Now we're doing a lot of Zoom still, you know, Zoom. Yeah. With, you, with your clients. Yes. I like to do a listing appointment on Zoom first. Oh, you know, wow. Okay. Love that. And then I record it. Okay. And then I can go back. I tell mm. them I'm going to record it so I don't forget anything. Yeah. And then great. I go back and then we, we capsulize what they said and we send it to them in an email. Mm. And so then later I can go back and, and, you know, tell them what it is that they told me yeah. that they said they didn't say. Yeah. So Siri, you, you do a, your first appointment with them is on zoom and then you go to their house after that. Yes. Yeah. I've I been love that. that. Yeah. I really like it because I want my whole team there. I have a, a small team yeah. so, and there's, there's four of us. And so and we're, we're all, you know, doing something. And so we all come together and that's been my best success. You mean on the zoom call? Yeah, that's we're all, awesome. Yeah. We're all together. And then we all talk. And even if they can't stay the whole time, like one, one works with the buyers and one works with the listings with me. And then Raymond helps me, my husband on the uh, inspection, but they wow. get to see everybody up front. And they get to wow. see who we are, see all the people that are working. For yes. Them. And so that that's been great for us. And then we also, uh, again, because our team is smaller, uh, right after that, then what we do is that we do a group text and a group email. So everybody gets to see everything. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great. great. So, yeah, that's good. That's really good. You guys, I don't. Yeah. I think the verse, part of this virtual is here to stay. I don't know that we'll ever. Get, I mean, there it's so much more efficient. Yeah. Well, I think that the pandemic really helped us. Yeah. Uh, and so it's, I, I rarely do I have somebody who doesn't know how to do it, even older people, because their grandkids have taught them. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody seems to know Zoom and everybody's busy. And yep. so, so um, after, you know, we started being able to go out and California was the worst, you know, we were yeah. for everything. Um, but after we started going out, um, then people are, were still, I say, Hey, here's your choice. I can come on, come over to the house, or I could start off with, with a zoom call and we can talk about, you know, your expectations and what Love we that. deliver. And, and you, you know, get into pricing on there on the zoom. No, I, I, it, I, um, I don't usually get into pricing. I can give somebody a range, you yeah. know? And, oh, the other thing I always ask everyone, um, I suppose you've already gone to Zoom and looked at the value of your house. You mean Zillow? Zillow. Zillow. Yeah. Sorry, Zillow. Yeah. 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 I say, I say that's just one of my questions. I so I so probably you've gone to to Zillow to look at the price of your house. And they're either gonna say, oh no, I don't even go in, I don't even know how to get in there. So that tells me their their level. Or they say, yeah, Zoom said my house was worth this. Zillow. Yeah, <laughs> Zillow. I'm sorry. <laughs> Zillow. Too many of them Z words. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, so so right you there, you're up yeah, then I know what I'm up against. You know, they I'm, might have in their mind that it's worth half a million more than what it is because Zillow said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you can always go to Redfin and Redfin is always lower, you know. So yeah. before I go to somebody's house, I do Zillow. Redfin and anything else I can find so yep. that I'll have that data because when they say to me Zillow said this, mm -hmm. I can say, yep. Well, 
Redfin said this. So we, who you, and, and, and one of the things that came up on the script off this weekend was, yeah. well, if Zillow had said your house was worth $50,000 less, would you have gone with them? You know, would yeah. you have believed them? You know, so yeah. they well, couldn't be the other way. That's good though, Redfin. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the other thing that we learned this week, somebody said, I'm, has Zillow been in your house? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. I, I love, love that. Yeah. And then the thing I thought of for Zillow too is, you know, they can't even get their own evaluations right on the houses they're buying. So how can they do get yours right? Yeah, yeah which is very accurate. Very yeah. accurate. But hey, you people have to right. So you have to know that information mm -hmm. because if yeah, you know, absolutely. So yeah. Is um people are asking, is it star power? Is that the group? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um yeah. and that actually I'm erected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it was we got it resurrected. Was a yeah. <laughs> I mean, we haven't met for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, I was going to say, I felt like I've heard Linda talk about that so many times, but I thought it was like not a thing anymore. So that's cool though, that they had that. Um, so Megan, we, went, and we went to just meet the people, but we ended up learning a lot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was fun. That's awesome. Megan asked, let me ask a couple of questions here. And then I just have about two or three more. I want to try to get through. Um, Megan asked a great question and we say this a lot. So is that she asked, is the opportunity for gain in market share during a recession due to other agents leaving skill-based or what are the greatest factors that can contribute to that? And my answer would be, it's all of the above. I think a, a, a shift in a recession requires more work. And I think there are always going to be people that will put in the work and people that won't put in the work. <laughs> and yeah. so I think in my mind, Megan, I think a lot of it is the people that think that they can just do what they've always done and they don't have to sharpen their skills and they don't have to create more experiences for their clients and they don't have to become the expert. They will lose market share from the agents that are willing to do those things and that not only want to do it, but they'll actually go and do it. Um, anything else you guys would add on that? Oh, uh, well, because if you sharp, if you're the expert and you sound different than everyone else yeah. and you have a great presentation that asks lots of great questions because the person that talks the most feels yeah. like it's the best presentation. So you don't want to be the one that leaves there thinking you were awesome. You want them to think, man, that was an aw that was so different and so awesome. And so winning more to me is one of the one of the ways you'll you'll come out ahead is you'll win more of the at bats you get on. Yeah. Yeah. What what I think is great about Keller Williams is that Gary Keller has always taught us to be ahead of the game. Yeah. Totally. So I think that Keller yeah. Williams agents really have the opportunity yeah. to be yeah. ahead yeah. of the game. And yeah. I really and I and I just see this in my in my area where um people are they're they're, they don't know what to do. Agents mm -hmm. don't know what to do now. Not agents in my office, but on the outside. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so, and they're behind. And so it'll be, uh, it'll probably be 2023 before they wake up and decide, yeah. oh, it's different. Well, they'll get frustrated because a lot of people are already starting to go out on appointments and not know how to handle some of the objections they're yeah. getting. Yeah. So. Well, and also Terry had a good point too. I think there will be some people, Megan, who will, um, they won't want to do the professional, you know, photographs and they won't want to do videos and they won't want to invest in some of the things that they need to, to actually be relevant and, and be kind of more with it. And so when their clients are out looking for those things and they're not willing to provide them, then they'll lose that market share to somebody who is. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So two more kind of bigger, quick questions. Obviously the rates are rising. Linda, you said you started when they were 18%. I know Gary said they were 23% or something when he started Terry, I'm sure you've seen all of them too. Um, how, what, what can you guys talk about creating urgency with our buyers and how much does or does not the rates affect? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I feel like that all these, a lot of these agents have in their mind, Oh my gosh, the rates are the rates are going up. The rates are going up. And yeah, they have gone up a little bit. And some people say we might see eight by the end of the year. Who the heck knows? Yeah. Um, but what would you say around that? Because people still buy houses. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, definitely people still buy houses. And that's what Linda was talking about, the motivation. So you got to yeah. have the motivation. But the other thing is that I've always prided myself in understanding loans. So, oh, Terry, I'm so glad you said that because I was going to, I'm not interrupt you, but I was going to say that I just learned, um, Gary told us in the last mastermind, one in five mortgages today, as of the end of June are an arm and the yeah. most, the large percentage of realtors don't know how to explain what an arm is. 
Exactly. Yep. I was just going to say downs. that is yep. that um, I spend a lot of time with my lender and um, making sure that I totally understand what new products are out there. Huge takeaway. Um, yeah. And um, so understanding finance, um, you know, uh, one of the things on my buyers, on our buyer consultation, and we do those on Zoom too, um, my lender comes on that buyer consultation. Love it. So when it's on Zoom, it's it's much easier, you know, so the buyer comes and the buyer's just there so that I can show the, you know, and I say right in front of my um, lender that, you know, it's totally up to you, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, if you want to use our lender or not. However, this person is somebody that we've used for years and he's an expert in this kind of first time yeah. buyers, you know, whatever you are, I'm an expert in that. I'm an expert in first time buyers, sellers. Um, Sorry guys, uh, Abby, I can't, I don't have access to mute. Um, thank you. Okay, perfect. Sorry, Terry, go ahead. So, yeah. so one thing you've got to really, you got to spend some time kind of thinking around this. One thing that's uh, good to do is like you just said, Dana, you said that some 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 places are telling us that they could go to eight percent by the end of the year. So, Mr. Miss Byer, would you rather buy a house at five? Will five percent look good when we get to eight? <laughs> Which you have bought at five percent or four percent or whatever whatever the number is at the time. Yep. When we get to eight or maybe even more. So that's one thing you have to think get them to think about. The other uh, thing, and I think I heard this from somebody at the conference this week, is marry the house and date the rate. Meaning you can. Yes, I love that. Because this person wanted to wait. That see, we had the audience make us a list of objections, and then we all just handled them. And the, the one of the objections was the person uh, thinks the rates are going to come down, and so they want to wait. Right. Oh. So, so you can tell them to marry the house and date the right the rates because you can always refinance if they do come down. But if they don't yeah. come down, you're you're safe because you got you went ahead and did the house. And then you got to learn about buy downs um, big time because oh, yes. and we you, talked about that. I mean, tons of people, you know, sellers will have to be willing to pay some points to buy them down sometimes. Yeah, people uh, in Gary's top group said that's already back. That yeah. they're already their mofers now are seller is willing to buy down rate. Yeah. And then the other thing is, is um, tell them to take if the prices had continued to go up last year and people were paying hundred thousand dollars over asking compared to the rate going up just a little bit, figure out the difference between uh, mm -hmm. two or three points in the rates compared to if they had been in the same pl place with a lower rate, but had to pay a hundred to thousand yeah. dollars more for the house. So you can rent, run those numbers and kind of let them see it that way. Love Again, that. you're moving people from emotion to logic. And the way, the best way you can do that is statistics and numbers and facts. Yeah. And, and, and the more that you can help people self-discover, yeah, like Linda said earlier, people don't want to be told. They yeah. Don't, they yeah. don't want to be sold. They don't want to be told. Right. But if you ask enough questions and you provide enough data, and I always say to my clients that uh, if you cannot make a decision anytime during the time that we're working together, it's my fault. Yeah. It's my fault because I didn't give you enough information to make a good decision. And I tell them, I'm never going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to give you enough information so that you can make that wise decision. Yeah. And I think if you go ahead and let them know up front that you're okay, if they don't do anything, yes. you take the air out of, they think you're just trying to sell them on doing something yep. and just say, you know, honestly, at the end of this, you may discover that it is not the right time for you to buy. And that'll be absolutely okay. You will have made the best choice for you. However, you might decide that it is. And so either way, I'm okay. So they don't think you've got commission breath and right. you're yep. trying to, uh, you know, sell them. Right. And that way, everything you say after that, they're going to understand, oh, okay. So I do have, I can not have to buy. I can get out of this. I can not do this. And then they listen better and they're, then yes. they're more willing to, it's kind of like when you do a takeaway with somebody, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't want to be rejected and they don't want something taken away. Right. So I sometimes will try to lead with that because I don't really care. Honestly, no. I know I'm not good enough to make a buyer, buyer, seller, seller, an agent join me. I'm just not, you know, and I don't never yeah. even want to get in that game to try. So once you do that, it kind of helps a little bit too. Yeah. And some of the yeah. listeners might think, well, that's easy for Linda and Terry because, you know, they've got a lot of business. They've been around for a long time, but I honestly, I've done that from day one. Yeah. You know, because I learned about myself that I didn't like to have negativity around me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I learned up front that it was better to take people who really want to do something and motivated 
and not just take anyone. Yeah, yeah love that. Yeah. Um, someone, uh, let's see, Hilda asked um, any book recommendations on helping clients with self discovery. Um, I'm going to, I'm typing in the chat right now. The first one that pops in my head, Linda, is uh, Never Split the Difference. And yeah. we have them on our podcast. And that's an amazing book on negotiating. Yeah. Are they asking books to give the sellers? Um, no books to help her with helping. Well, I don't know. Hilda, will you clarify that? Do you mean for the sellers or for you to learn how to help them self-discover better? If you want to just let us know in the chat and then I'll, I might've misunderstood that um, for agents to self-discover better. Okay. For them. There's a book um, question behind the question. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, good. How yep. you learn, that's how you learn to go deep. So you ask enough questions, like if you go seven deep, that's what that book's about. And, you know, Dana, I think about, because I just got off the phone last week with Sid Walker, and I hope you and I can oh, yes. this webinar for everybody, because he's created a new online course. But I love all of his strategy, because what he teaches you is to don't come from ego, because yep. ego is what makes us nervous and doesn't want to call and do all that stuff if we can come from contribution and that's what really this is then you're not as hesitant to talk to people or say things to people because you don't have an agenda you, yep. you don't have ego involved and so i'm sitting here looking at this book that uh, in which he's on our podcast i don't remember which one he is but how i conquered call reluctance fear of self-promotion and increase my prospecting and really all he does is work with your mindset yep. to pick up the phone he doesn't really tell you because what he says is your instinct and your heart knows what to say. Yeah, but you're letting your ego try to convince you that there's this thing you got to say or do. And so I'm I'm excited about his stuff again because he teaches you that ego is the one that causes us to get in so much issues. And if we'll come from you know contribution in the heart, then just like Terry has always done, you'll get a whole lot more uh, in the in the long run. So I would probably you know, pick up some of his work. His name is Sid Walker. He's got two or three books, but I like it because he really works on your mental. He's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That was one of our most listened to episodes too. And he, wow. he was, yeah, he was great. Um, and I'll include those episodes in the follow-up email. So anyone who registered also make sure that we send all that out too. Um, okay. Last five minutes. And if you guys have any questions, uh, make sure and uh, type it in the chat. But I know you guys have done some crazy things to stand out amongst your competition. Linda has stood on roofs. Adam says I say that word wrong. R rough, roof, whatever. Tops of houses. Uh, and didn't you, had, Linda, how do you say it? You're not the, probably the person for me to ask either. No, you and I are going to say it the same way. I would say roofs, but it's probably roof. 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 Uh, I don't know. It's, let's just go with what we know. Roof. Let's yeah. just don't roof. stand on the roof. roof. That's what Terry. That's what Adams. When I when I say that word, he starts to bark like a dog. Like he's like. What does he roof, say? Roof. Roof. It's not a U. It's an O. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? Yeah, Ali said too. Y'all know what we mean. But get up you there on top mean. of that where the shingles are. Yes, Linda's not where the shingles are. Terry's done a million things. I think the one thing I remember is you sending a two dollar bill when your client's kids lose their teeth or something crazy. And a so ten dollar gas card. Yeah. Yes, oh, when they get their gas card. Oh, now, now. <laughs> hey, that's what we said the other day. We were talking in a group, and I said, you know, honestly, the best thing you could do right now is give them instead of a. A ten dollar gas card, give them a twenty five, and the parents would probably steal it yeah, from the right. kid. She gives it to the teenager who just got their license. Yeah. It's the uh, best idea. Yeah. I know so many people love those ideas. So, what are some of those things that you guys do or have done to really stand out? Yeah, and to build the relationship. Yeah. Well, I mean, my cards, and that's what that's what we did the um, that yeah. special thing on. My cards have always been good, and and this is snail cards. Yeah, you can do you know, send out cards and you can do all kinds of other cards, but these are still, and now because hardly anybody gets any mail, mm -hmm. you know, with an actual stamp on it and handwritten, you know, but sending, um, I mean, I sent out, oh, I probably sent out $200 worth of cards for graduation. Wow. And I, find these, I find these on Facebook. So I yep. look at Facebook and I look for things. And so I'll send a $50 gift card for a graduation. And so I found a lot of graduation people and um, and then I sent the two dollar bills to all those kids that go from preschool to kindergarten and they graduate, you know, yeah. at least Love in California, it. they do that. Yeah. You know, and so, um, you know, doing things that, you know, I kind of look at what other everybody else is doing and I do the opposite. Yeah. 
or yeah. if they're doing nothing, you do just a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. But uh <laughs> yeah, and I would say um I tend to lean towards, you know, like educating people. Yeah. Like yeah. I would probably one of the first things I would probably do is put together uh, an opportunity for to teach people shift. Yeah. Because they don't really, you know, I taught 150 of my past clients quantum leap before because yeah. they don't have any resources yeah. to sit down and spend all day and talk about your life and how to have a big life. So what is something so different that no one else could do, right? Yeah. Well, most people, because they're not with KW, wouldn't think to use the shift book because, yeah. they, you know, they just, number one, they just wouldn't. And so I would probably lean towards that kind of stuff. I would say, what are my people thinking in their head? Uh, I love all the cute advertising. Like we used to have a dog and an Irish setter dog that was our neighbors. And we'd say dependable and trustworthy. And so is the dog. All that stuff is eye catching and fun, but, but that's just to get their attention. At the end of the day, I'm going to try to show up as the expert yeah. and say, what are they asking themselves in their head right now? What in the world is going to happen next in this market? I yeah. have not met a person yet that didn't find out I was in real estate. And the first thing they asked me is, what do you think is going to happen in the market? Yeah. So why don't you just lead with that? Yeah. You know, let me tell you what I think is going to happen in the market or, and, you know, just kind of be that reason. And I'll, I'll look for anything where I can get 50 eyes looking at me instead of two. So I'm yep. going to be a teacher, I'm going to offer some place to, that I can get a group of people to come because wherever there's a large number of people, there's an opportunity for you to do business. And because I'm going to give and contribute, I'm going to create beholdenness and reciprocity. Yep. And they're either going to send somebody to me or they're going to do something with me. So I would do probably do an investor seminar. Mm -hmm. I would do shift seminar. I would do whatever I could to get in front of people. Yeah. Two of the things that I would like to add is that one of the things that I started doing because we've had a lot of forest fires in California. Mm -hmm. And so people mm. have been underinsured. Oh, and so certainly. because people, uh, the values of property have escalated so much, then unless your insurance company has given you a call, which they don't, mm -hmm. then you're probably underinsured. So being able to call people now, that's a really good way to call them and yep. say, you know, I'd really love to talk to you about the value of, of your home and have you talk to your insurance person you know theory you know what's funny about that that you just said actually our our jeweler like the i tend to like jewelry a little bit yeah. and uh our jeweler called us and said hey i just wanted to give you a heads up that your diamond diamonds are so up right now that diamonds are worth like twice as much as what they were even That's two true. years ago and he said, you all need to make, you need to have your jewelry reappraised. I'm happy to do it for you so that you can change your insurance. Yes. And I looked at Adam and I said, man, like that's good service. I mean, yeah. cause I would have never have thought to call and add that change and get new appraisals on my jewelry and add it to our insurance. But yeah. even doing that, like you said, with the fires, but they, to me, I thought, I wonder how many other jewelry people are doing that with their clients. Probably not a lot. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Terry, yeah. sorry, you had one more. Yeah, the other the other one, um, we're just starting to do this. Um, unfortunately, I've had several clients in the last year pass away. I mean, young, like 50 years old, and um, they they passed away oh, and the good. spouse didn't know anything about anything. They didn't know the passwords. They oh, didn't yeah. want to get into the bank, you know, and so we're putting together Zoom seminars talking about we call it good. we call it the Red Book Project. And what it is, is getting a binder and getting all of this wow. information together, you know? And so um, uh, this, I put it into my newsletter and I just, just put a little teaser in there. And I got a bunch of people who said, I wow. really am interested in that. Yeah. And I was telling Terry, I remember when my son-in-law passed away, my daughter and I were, we didn't have his passcodes. We didn't know the, she didn't know the bank account numbers. We were so lost. Yeah. What a great idea yeah. to add value and get a chance to, to be with your people. I love this. And everybody needs that no matter how everybody, you know, and then not having a will or a trust, Yeah. you know, you know so you can, you know, we're going to put a whole series together. So we'll have a, an attorney love that will this. come on. That. Um, we can have the insurance person come on, you know, about the self, you know, having enough insurance. And so we could put a whole, you know, series together on this. Well, I think Terry, we just figured out what you'll have to come on the podcast next and talk about. <laughs> exactly. People are already in the chat saying, I need to know what goes in the binder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, so I, remember, I remember I Googled a lot 
Uh, Cause after it happened to Andrew and we were so lost for so long, I mean, yeah. she didn't know how to get in his Facebook page wow. to get messages from him. I mean, there's just so many things you don't think about, but I Googled and started with just what I could find on, on, yeah. on not just in the Google to figure out what people said you should have put together. Yeah. yeah. And, I, <laughs> and again, if you Google, um, there's all kinds of different books and things. And so yeah. what I'm doing is so we're taking your name on it. Yeah. We're taking all of this stuff and, and, you know, plagiarizing, you know, yeah. bringing it all together on the things that we want. And then yeah. Raymond, my husband um, has a um, um, designation in grief counseling. And so he's wow. grief counseling oh, awesome. stuff in there. Um, and, you know, things about like, you know, if you were to go tomorrow, who would you wish that you had said something to? Ooh. So write those letters beforehand. Yes. Oh and my then, gosh. That's yeah. great. So, you, know what I, you know what I love about that, about that. And honestly, this is like really been this whole uh, training, which has been so good is you like, you aren't just you and everybody, you're not just a realtor that sells houses <laughs> that when you want to have longevity and you want to last, you become their everything. Yeah. Yeah. Confidant. The, yeah. Everything. Yeah. The more value that you can give, the more um, relationship that you can build, the more that you notice, the more that you're the expert, the more that you are all of these things. Like, I love even that you are still doing the letter from the heart. Like you can do them, be consistent with them. You're not just their real estate agent anymore. You're everything. And those are the people that take market share during a shift. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's so interesting because I always ask my clients, you know, how, how do they, excuse me, how do they perceive me? Yeah. And they always say, I care. Yeah. Well, she can, this, this weekend, she left the conference and went and visited one of her past clients who uh, husband had died yeah. and she moved, moved here. Um, and so Terry, uh, cause I asked Terry, I said, gosh, she had 40 clients move away last year. I'm like, are you going to be out of business or anything? She said, I said, what are you going to do to replace us? Do you tell everybody they got to bring somebody before they leave town? But she said, um, I don't sleep. I don't take them off my list. Oh, yeah. So they still refer to me because they still know people in that area. She still still treat there, them yeah. like, they're, like they're her client. I love that. Well, I mean, if, she, I, if I put something in my, um, in a mailing and it says it's a coupon for something, I ask them if they will send the coupon to somebody who still lives in Thousand Oaks. Oh, great idea. Love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, we're four minutes over. Thank everybody hung on. So they must've got something. <laughs> So um, thank you guys so much. This is like such a good bonus to have Terry. So thanks yeah. for sharing. So I got to share, share my great friends with everybody. I know, I know. So if you guys could give them some thanks and love in the chat that we've already gotten tons of it, but we'll, we will be sending out the recording. I took copious notes um, as, as per usual. So I'll send out the best questions and the ideas and all of those things. And if you guys have any other questions, just let us know and we'll get it from those ladies. And then now we've got to have uh, Terry back on the podcast. So we'll, we need to work on that. <laughs> you got it. We'll do it. Thank you guys. Thank you Enjoy your time yeah. together. Tell Nikki I, I, I will don't see you. Bye. You're going to stay on for Tech Tuesday. Oh yes, thanks, Jen. Okay, I won't shut it out till they get on for you. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for being here. Thanks, Dana. Thank you.